One of the best .com domain name extension alternatives. Let's get to it. In a nutshell, as long as you get a top level domain name extension like a .net, .org, .co, uh, you know you're good to go. You know it's going to be you're going to be able to build a successful website on an alternative domain name extension. And I just want you to have that peace of mind that you can register a .net or a .org or a .co, etc., and build a proper website. Like I built a .co website to over 1,000 visitors a day. I was able to then secure the .com from a domain name squatter. So then I moved the site from the .co to the .com, and so now it's a .com, which I prefer, but I still had success building it as a .co, and that's just what something I want to emphasize to you that you can use alternative domain name extensions and have success. You don't have to worry like, oh, like you're going to hurt your site and going to like your your site would just be performing so much better if it was a .com. Like in general, yeah, you want the .com whenever possible, of course, obviously, but you're watching this video probably because you want the .com and you can't get it because of a squatter. (laughs) So like what a squatter is, it's just like a business or an individual whose business is about going to register like various domain names and then they sell them at a higher price, which is what I had to do. So like the dot, I got the dot co version of my domain name, but then I had to pay a premium price for the dot com. Unfortunately, it's just an aspect of this business. Anyways, what are some good alternatives to dot com? Let's get to it. So my first favorite alternative to the dot com is obviously the dot co. It is the domain name extension alternative that I personally decided to go with when I was presented with this specific dilemma. I couldn't get the dot com for the domain name that I wanted, so I just went with the dot co because. I just like it. <laughs> There's nothing more sophisticated than that. I like .co. It's very similar to .com. Just drop the M and .co. There you go. I think it has a nice ring to it. I think it looks cool and modern and different when compared to something like .net personally. And that's it. And so the history behind .co was it was used to be the country code for Columbia, but now it's been changed into a top-level domain name. It was founded by uh, this started a whole this whole thing was started by GoDaddy as a way to create a viable alternative to the .com. That's exactly why the .co exists, and that's also why the .co version is just a pinch more expensive than getting a .com. It's more expensive because they're trying to dissuade. Uh, squatters from gobbling up all the .co's and so people can actually get the domain name they want. So anyways, that's number one, the .co domain extension. Number two is .net. So I like .net because it's just another trustworthy legacy domain extension like the .com. Now historically speaking, people would just typically register the .nets because they couldn't get the .com, but as time has gone on, .nets are harder to get, .coms are harder to get, .co's are becoming now harder to get, etc. And just this, this, this is just this never-ending process of domain extensions being gobbled up uh, by people wanting to start websites and blogs as well as like squatters who make it their business. But anyways, .NET is still a viable alternative because it's trustworthy just like the .com. Now the history behind .NET was it was created for uh, networking websites. That's why it's called .NET. But nowadays people just use it for any type of broad uh, commercial purpose like starting a website, blog, online store, etc. And so .NET is a good alternative to .com because it has that broad appeal for any type of website and it's also commercially viable and people also just associate it with, as an alternative to .com so people don't find it as a strange like gimmicky like domain extension. People trust .NET websites. Uh, so that's number two, .NET. Number three is .io. So .io is a really weird domain name extension that has just become really popular for tech startups or software type companies to use as their domain name extension as an alternative to .com. Now, .io stands for the British Indian Ocean Territory. And so if you're wondering, like, why do companies like .io? Like, why would they go with .io instead of .tech? Well, .io, because one, it's just two letters, like .co, so it's really nice to have a sh- very short URL. But .io, I, I-O is an abbreviation for input-output, which is just a terminology when it comes to uh, computers. And so that's number three, .io, but only if you're going to be having some type of like technical startup or software. That's typically the type of website that uses .io. If you're starting a blog or an online store, I wouldn't use .io. Okay, number four is .blog and .shop. So .blog and .shop. Uh, You know, originally, my personal opinion, when I first saw those domain extensions, I thought they were a little bit gimmicky, but I've kind of warmed up to them over time because they are top-level domain extensions. And if you do have a dedicated blog, like you could have like your name .blog, I think that works. And same with an online store. So like if you have an e-commerce, website powered by like WooCommerce or Shopify and you can't get like the .com that you want, it's not a bad idea to go with .shop because a lot of like phrases and sentences can match 
with shop, like dot shop. And so you can get clever about like what kind of like URL structure you want to create, like what the name of your URL is that can match with like dot shop. So it's like t-shirts dot shop. You know, for example, that's a very generic example, but that that works and people see that and they would definitely trust that. I personally would trust a store that's called like a dot shop. Now, obviously you should use these for the respective purposes. So, you know, if you have an online store, don't call it dot blog. And if you're starting a blog, don't use dot shop because those don't make any sense. But that's number four, dot blog and dot shop. And number five is country code specific domain names. So country code specific domain names are very powerful and are very useful in a lot of different situations. So like if you're a lawyer in Canada, it's better to have your website be like dot CA because that makes your website more relevant to search terms related to Canada. If you're creating a blog about like Vietnamese travel, like you're, you love Vietnam, you love backpacking through Vietnam, you know, it's not a bad idea to get a dot VN. So you can have like travelvietnam.vn and your whole entire website's in English and, it, and it's geared towards like say like expats or backpackers, etc. It's going to do really well for various search terms when people are typing in uh, like things to do in Saigon or places to visit in Ho Chi Minh City, etc. So that's kind of like how you want to leverage country code specific domain names if you're doing something that's specific to a country. So like if you're Indian and you're typing everything in Hindi, then use .in because that makes a lot more sense than going .com. Same if like you're a Thai person, use .co.th, etc. Now one thing to make note of though is that country code specific domain names, while they're excellent at helping your website rank for like specific search terms within a specific country, they don't have broad appeal. And so like if you have like a .ca domain extension because you want to, you're a blogger and you're Canadian or whatever, you're better off going with like a .com, .net, .org. If you're just starting some like generic website about a specific topic, uh, you don't want to go with a country code specific domain name unless you're creating content that's geared for that specific country. So just be careful with that. Don't infringe on anyone's copyright. So I just have to touch on this really quick. You should be using alternative domain name extensions because you can't get the .com that you want because it's taken by a squatter. And so you can find that out by just doing a quick search for the .com that you want to register. Okay, so if you type into like Namecheap, for example, a specific domain name that you want to get, you see that's taken, then go and search for that website. See if it actually exists or see if it's owned by a squatter. If it's owned by a squatter, then you're good to go. Then just get a .net, .co, etc., and build your site. It's fine. But if you do a search for the .com that you want to get and you notice that another website exists, you can't just go ahead and register an alternative domain name extension and build the site with the same exact domain name because that's copyright infringement. So Pat Flynn has smartpassiveincome.com. I can't just go and register smartpassiveincome.co and create a whole website on smart passive income because that's infringing on Pat's brand, okay? So Pat's within his full legal rights to just come to me and say, hey, take down your site. Like you can own the .co, but you can't actually use it and build a site, if that makes sense. So don't copy anyone's website. Uh, don't infringe on anyone's copyright because you're just going to be wasting your time because you put your you put your site at peril of being uh, just taken down uh, because of copyright infringement. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, hit that like button, and check the links in the description. My name is David, WebsiteCreativePro.com. Have a great day and thank you.